Okay, so welcome back again to MBABullshit.com. So the topic for this video is EPS, earnings per share, which is one of the market value measures, or actually could also be a, a profitability measure, depending on, well, depending on what book or which professor you're talking to. Or it could be both, let's just say it's both. Alright, so remember you can always go back to MBABullshit.com. Alright, so this video discusses one of my free videos on liquidity, profitability, and or market and market value, which includes which include these ratios over here. Alright? And after these you can check out my next videos in MBABullshit.com, such as my video on financial leverage ratios, and that video includes all of these ratios over here and you can also check out my other video on mbabullshit.com on turnover ratios and that video includes all of these um, all of these ratios over here okay so let's get down to it now let's start with a story let's say that ABC company's net income last year Okay, is uh, one thousand dollars, and there are one hundred shares outstanding. What is its earnings per share? Very simple. Now, outstanding means how many shares? Well, never. Mind. That's not the focus of this video. Uh, like I said, you should already understand the uh, terms and and stuff on financial statements. I'd like to keep this video as short as possible. Um, what is its earnings per share? Well it's super simple earnings per share is simply the total net income last year of the whole company all right divided by the number of shares outstanding okay number of shares outstanding now if you if you do this equation you'll find that the earnings per share is exactly ten dollars a nice simple easy round number now this is the most easy part of financial ratios, which is to do the, which is to compute the actual number. What's more, what, what's more important is what does this mean? Okay, this means that every share earns ten dollars a year in profit. Well, or last year every share earned ten dollars a year in profit, meaning you get the whole profit of the company, and you divide that by the total number of shares, then every shareholder okay, assuming each shareholder owns only one share which is not really the case but assuming every shareholder owns exactly one share then every shareholder gets ten dollars a year in profit and I'd like to stress that this is ten dollars a year in profit not in dividends okay if you remember well I don't uh, you should know that by now but if you don't that's okay um, remember that when the company earns profit okay it's supposed to share that profit or remit or give that profit back to the owners or back to the shareholders in the form of dividends now how much do they uh, how much uh, does the company pay back to the owners in dividends um, they could pay all of the profits to the owners in dividends or the company might keep some of the profits inside the company and only use some of the profits to give to the owners as dividends. So every share in this case when we compute the EPS or earnings per share okay we talk about the profit per share or the earnings per share not the actual dividends that the company eventually decides to pay to the shareholders. Okay so, is a high earnings per share good or bad? Well, generally, a low earnings per share is bad because it means less earnings or money for the shareholders. A high earnings per share is good because it means more earnings and money for shareholders. Now, there is a major flaw with this ratio, which is that the earnings per share is a very incomplete indicator it doesn't take into account the price of the stock or the owner's investment. Now, What do I mean by this? Do you prefer an earnings per share? Of, let's say you're, you own part of a company. 
Do you prefer an earnings per share of $100 or $1? Of course, you would say $100. But, what if you had to pay $1 million for one share and then it had an earnings per share of only $100? Okay? Or, what if you paid only $2 for a share of stock and then it had an earnings per share of one dollar as you can see here you would prefer this one instead of this okay you invest only two dollars then you get one dollar in earnings but in this first case sure you get a hundred dollars in earnings but you had to pay one million dollars for that share of stock so it's much it's a, it's a much better deal to get this one even if it has a lower earnings per share okay so obviously we choose the second one so how do we analyze this traditionally first is to compare the uh, historical earnings per share of your company or of this company so that maybe it's not your company maybe you're thinking about investing in it if the earnings per share is higher now than last year's then it indicates that the profit the company is more profitable profitable than before now I stress and if the earnings per share is lower than last year's then it indicates that the company is less profitable than before now I say it, there are, this is something there's a very important caveat here all right there's a very important thing to take note of this only works if your company has not had any stock splits, stock dividends, or share purchases, or things like that. Because, um, because if you if your company has had, for example, share, oh, that complicates the situation. Put it this way, because maybe your shares outstanding. Me, how do I explain this is in an easy way? Well, I do have another video on stock splits and stock dividends, um, and share repurchases. I highly recommend you watch that. But for now, just take it. Uh, yeah, I recommend you watch that. And um, let's just say because it's not so simple. Okay, there's a whole that that's a whole video in itself explaining what happens to dividends etc when there are stock splits and stock dividends because when there's a stock split your one share can suddenly become two shares okay or there's a share uh, repurchase um, your two shares might the the value of two shares might merge into just one bigger value share and things like that so uh, if you don't, if you didn't uh, understand what I just said, then please do watch my other video on on dividend policy. Okay. The second way of analyzing. Oh yeah. So it, 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 I forgot that I actually put that in this uh, in this slide. Watch my other videos. Anyway, the second way of analyzing this is to compare the earnings per share of this company to other similar similar companies oops but that's actually not really a good thing to do I think and why because when you compare a ratio to other similar companies that that's okay but in this case when you compare earnings per share to other similar companies this will only work or this will only make sense if the market price per share is exactly the same for similar companies or if the equity per share is this exactly the same for similar companies but that never happens okay that never happens the the, the uh, market price per share of Walmart is never exactly the same as the market share uh, the market per share the market price per share of Walmart is never exactly the same as the market price per share of Target at the same time okay so therefore I would not really recommend using uh, this um, type of analysis for the earnings per share. So instead of this, it's better to use the PE ratio or the price earnings ratio instead. And that one you can compare the different price earnings ratios of different companies. Now I ha you can watch my other free video on the price earnings 
ratio. All right, so that's uh, that's it for now. I hope you learned something. Remember to share us if you like us. Share share it if you like it. Follow me on Twitter at MBA Bullshit, or and please join my fan page on Facebook, Facebook.com/slash MBA Bullshit for the latest updates on my latest video. And simply please forward my YouTube links on your email or your other social media. So have a great day and goodbye.